Going against the grain and pushing personal limits are nothing new to the independent INFJ personality type. The question is, when does taking the road less traveled come across as rebellion in others' perspectives? And how intentionally rebellious does that leave the individualistic and unconventional INFJ in nature? Welcome, or welcome back, psychos! Before we get into it, we'd love it if you liked and subscribed to our channel, as well as to click the post notification bell so you never miss a video. All right, let's get right into the video, starting with number one. They actually do want to stand out. To the individualistic and happily unique INFJ, blending in just simply isn't an option. No matter how convincing they may be in their quest to find familiarity in their surroundings, this free-spirited type wouldn't want it any other way. However, the paradox behind it all is that the INFJ tends to not want to fit in with the crowd, yet the attention that comes from being expressively unique and independent can put them in a sticky situation of being the center of attention. And the center of attention is exactly where an INFJ doesn't want to be. So, while their independence may give them a rather rebellious reputation or image in the eyes of some, their intentions are far from a grab at attention. In fact, they tend to influence others through their unorthodox viewpoints and actions without even realizing they're doing things differently. Number 2. They only rebel when they're confined. Once the INFJ has created the life they've imagined for themselves, or at least something close to it, they realize that their rebellious nature was only due to the inability to express themselves freely. When this truth-seeking type is confined to others' rules, regulations, standards, and expectations, the INFJ's rebellion slowly creeps up. Now, it's not that they're unable to follow societal rules or that they live each day waiting for the next rule they challenge. But when the INFJ finds themselves in a place where they've been feeling trapped or unable to be their full selves for a long enough time, a switch flips. Once this independent type feels constrained, nothing can mitigate how they perceive the situation. Their passive, go-with-the-flow nature dwindles away as they become more and more consumed in the unruly fight-or-flight energy. This is the same confinement they find when they're under the spell of someone else's prolonged negative energy. Once they feel trapped within a connection, they simply can't be themselves towards that individual. Number 3. Asking questions and not settling for silly answers Speaking of confinement, INFJs feel confined when they are coerced to involve themselves in something with little explanation of its reasoning. To this curious type, elaborate questioning is a natural part of their decision-making process. They are quite the opposite of conformists in the fact that they can never happily accept something simply because it's expected of them. Explanations such as, it's just the way it's always been, or we go by the book, doesn't mean anything to an INFJ. If anything, when involved people have no means of explaining, this type can become even more suspicious of the matter and the people involved. To some conventionalists, this reluctance and refusal to just simply accept can come across as extremely disruptive. Whether it's education, work, play, or relationships, INFJs rarely bow down to authority, especially corrupt authority and they aren't apt to consider people in a higher position to necessarily be more knowledgeable than people of less power. Because of this slight distrust, INFJs almost always do their own investigation on new information. Number 4. They hardly see the grain to be able to go with it. It's said that the INFJ is so apt to going against the grain in life, but what even is this so-called grain of society that's being referred to? Well, by going against the grain, one is choosing a path or making a decision that is contrary to the natural inclination of the group. It's to do things different from what is considered normal or usual. And of course, it's believed it takes courage and confidence to be able to stand up for what you believe in, despite others' opinions. However, when it comes to the INFJ and their natural inclination to take the road less traveled, sometimes they hardly wonder why there's no traffic in their lane. 
While from a distant perspective, society may seem like one big bubble of people headed in the wrong direction, INFJs know deep down inside that this perspective is small-minded. And so, they try not to focus on this concept of going with or against the grain. And because of this, INFJs can become so familiar with their rather alternative priorities that they can even forget just how different they are from others. Number 5. They have to back up their strong morals. If there's one aspect of life that every INFJ would happily rebel for is any cause they hold close to their hearts. In fact, it's the stories of other people that usually light the spark in an INFJ's heart. This spark gives the normally conflict-avoidant INFJ the confidence, motivation, and mental strength to stand up for their cause. The unique aspect of this rebellion is that they aren't nearly as passionate when it comes to something that benefits only themselves. Through their inborn empathy, INFJs absorb the pain, hurt, and hope from others and combine it with their logical planning to fuel their moral desire. This is what gives the INFJ their name of being the advocate and the protector of the 16 personalities and what explains the common phenomenon of famous INFJ activists. Number 6. They can seem seriously unapproachable. Resting B-face is nothing new to the often mentally distracted INFJ type. Without getting a taste for their energy and warm presence, people with the INFJ personality type can seem, well, cold. When it comes to social outings or really just being out in public in general, this observant type can seem rather aloof and even standoffish, which can certainly translate to intimidating rebellion. To explain this simply, INFJs could literally be staring someone down with a less than pleasant look on their face, arms crossed and all, and yet their minds are filled with only positive thoughts. They're probably pondering whether or not they should compliment something they admire about that person, or if that would just be creepy or they're running through their minds of everything they have to do once they get home. Or they could even be questioning one of their many deep life questions. Yep, right there in the grocery line. An INFJ's mind is never not going 100 miles a minute, and sometimes that concentration can make their outside appearance not match their inner processes. Number 7. They're able to bring others out of their comfort zones. INFJs may make people feel uncomfortable through their mistaken demeanor. However, there's no type able to better push someone towards their goals in the most gentle and effective way like the INFJ. When it comes to comfort zones, INFJs have had to learn to stretch themselves beyond their comfort zones one temporary adventure at a time. They stretch themselves so far because they know in a short time they will be able to be back in their comfort zone with more knowledge, experience, and information to process while they reset their energy. And each time, their comfort zone grows wider and wider, becoming even more flexible and wise with time. This learned ability allows the INFJ to stand as a beacon of adventure for their fellow introverts trapped in their comfort zones. Slowly and almost silently, the INFJ plants seeds of curiosity and encouragement to their fellow Earthlings, rebelliously swapping blue pills for red pills through their oh-so-defiant nature. Which brings us to the last point of today's video, number 8. Self-rebellion is their magic ingredient to life. There's no question as to whether or not the elusive INFJ understands the world on a deep soul level. And with this understanding, they know that tyranny often begins within. It begins with the human ego and its need to control, a need that is in each and every one of us. And with that, they know that they can either transform their rigid ego and self-importance into a more self-actualized ego, or forever remain controlled by it. So, most INFJs learn to turn the tables on their egoistic ways early on, by rebelliously using their ego as a tool rather than being a tool controlled by their ego. With this self-rebellion, INFJs shine a spotlight on their egoistic views and, instead, use it to prevent themselves from falling into complacency or stagnation. 
This allows them to stop trying to control and instead use this mental capacity to surrender to both order and chaos in a much healthier way. At the end of the day, they've realized that the ultimate form of rebellion is rebellion against the self through proactive self-overcoming. Well, psychos, that's it for today. Before you go, in the comments below, tell us of a time your rather rebellious image was brought to your attention as an INFJ. Also, make sure to leave us a like, share with your friends, and also subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a video.